So just two uh, little points today, if I may. Uh, as regards fasting, our readings obviously are about fasting and our gospel is obviously about fasting. So um, I think uh, I can't not talk about fasting. So uh, it's interesting because here Isaiah, or the Lord through Isaiah, <clears throat> is kind of giving out to people for, for doing something apparently good, fasting, but fasting in the wrong way. Or fasting, but fasting with the wrong intention which is an interesting thing, because an intention isn't visible. So outside, I mean, fair play to someone if they fast and they sit down in sackcloth and ashes and they, you know, they hang their head and people know they're fasting, but fair, like they're, actually, they're actually fasting. They're actually renouncing food, sitting in misery. And I mean, that's, that's we would consider fairly commendable, I would think. You know what I mean? But the Lord is saying that this, this on its own is no good unless the attitude of heart is right, unless the, the, the interior life is right, okay? So there's no point doing that kind of thing, sitting down in sackcloth and ashes and oppressing the workmen and quarreling and squabbling when you fast and you strike the poor man with your fist, okay? Fasting like yours today will never make your voice heard on high. Is that the sort of fast that pleases me? A truly, a truly penitential day for men? Hanging your head like a reed, lying down on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call fasting? A day acceptable to the Lord? The Lord's been pretty clear. Okay. Um, is not this the sort of fast that pleases me? It is the Lord who speaks. Whenever he says that, okay, you know he's laying it down. Okay. Is not this the sort of fast that pleases me? It is the Lord who speaks to break unjust fetters, to undo the tongues of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke and share your bread with the hungry. Now, uh, uh, he goes on in that, that, that vein now to clothe the man to, to be naked not turn away from your own kin okay we have to be really really careful here there's a, there's a very important um, uh, how would you call it a kind of like a theological attitude that we have uh, as Catholics which we have to be careful to maintain the Lord isn't saying here okay don't fast as in don't fast in the ordinary way from food okay but it's what, this theological kind of principle that we have is both and it's not either or, okay? If we approach theology or kind of our attitude to God or attitude to faith in general as either or, or, we do have to have clarity, but not everything is black and white as in it's kind of one or the other. It can be one and the other, right? It, and it's important where they, where they aren't mutually exclusive that we hold things together. You know what I mean? Like, should we be, should we be traditional or charismatic? Well, how about a bit of both? A bit of both would be great. Do you know what I mean? We can call it tradismatic. <laughs> you know, where you have this kind of love of, of the, the tradition of our church and at the same time be alive in the spirit. Why not? Okay, so it's kind of keep both things together. So it's, it, it's, it's not a case of don't fast on bread and water and, you know, take care of the poor and, and the needy instead. No, it's, it's do both, right? It's do both. So don't, don't make scripture uh, contradict itself. Okay, so we try, and do, we try and do both. So yes, we can and should fast um, at a minimum, I, I, would, I would imagine, during Lent from whatever the, 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 the unnecessary is, the chocolates and the Nutellas and the whatever. Um, by all means do that. But at the same time, if you know there's someone that you're not talking to, someone you hate, someone you despise, someone you haven't forgiven, do that as well. Fix that, pray for that, reconcile with them. You know, again, not one or the other, but both, both, both and. Both and, very, very important. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI was absolutely fantastic at that, this, this kind of both and idea. If two things aren't mutually exclusive, if they're not sinful, then try and keep both together. Okay? So, good. Um, just had that clarified. Very briefly, if you had to summarize your faith, what would you do? Or when people look at us as Catholics, what do they think a good summary of our faith is? When you ask your average student, brother, sister, even parent, uh, to summarize our faith. Where, where do you start? This is a, a very, very important thing, and we're, we're going to be getting into it a little more now in Holy Family as we go through Scripture, trying to kind of summarize this absolutely massive and relatively complex story into a, a synthesis, a, a, a summary. How do you kind of pull it all together? Now, the, the, the very common thing these days, if you ask someone, would say, they'd say, well, um, so God, 
this is someone who I think, I think would be fairly well informed, would probably say. So God creates everything, right? God creates everything. And then we come along, so we're here on earth, and we have to try and, you know, stay kind of above the line, you know, do what, what God asks and things. And then, and this, as I say, would be someone fairly well informed. Then at the end of your life, there's this kind of final judgment where we go up or down. You know, for those who, how can I say this without being offensive? For those who may not be of a more profound theological persuasion, uh, they may be of the o o idea that, that we're creating the world and we kind of cruise along, and then at the end, whoosh, up we go. If you've seen the movie Soul, um, that's kind of the, the, the idea there, that just everyone goes to heaven. Okay, great. This is wrong on so many levels, it's hard to know where to begin. Uh, but there's one point I'd like to make on it. What is the problem with that summary? What is the problem with what I've just said? The difficulty with spotting the problem is it's more or less what I haven't said is the problem. What is the problem there? So I'm here on earth, uh, kind of, you know, more or less try and stay above the line, and then at the end, in comes God, and I'm judged one, one way or the other. The, the, the real problem, one among many, but the real problem with this is God has nothing to do with my life. This whole life story or, or faith summary, it's egocentric. It's me-centered. I do my thing. I have to kind of stay above the line. And then just in the end, God comes with a big hammer, up or down. It has nothing to do with, with my life. This story right, does not have anything to do with the cross. It has nothing to do with grace. It has nothing to do with God's revelation. It has nothing to do with scripture. Right? This is just me making my way on my own, and then God comes in at the end to kind of to judge what I've done, like uh, an exam inspector, okay? So this, 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 is not, this is not the gospel, like this is, this is not how God reveals himself. This is not how Jesus speaks to us. Uh, so an alternative summary, <clears throat> this is something that I suppose we could, we could do a whole series of, of, of homilies on. This would be interesting some other time, uh, not today. So it's not, a more correct version of the story, that God creates everything, and he creates everything good. And he creates everything with a plan for our happiness and a plan for our joy, and a plan for our freedom, okay? And then at some point in, in, this, in this epic drama, we're, we're created. But from the very moment of our conception, we've always been in the mind of God. And from the very moment of our conception, God is with us, especially from the very moment of our baptism when we become a member of his mystical body. And in, 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 in virtue of that, then, we're able to receive grace, okay? So the grace of the sacraments, the grace of, of, of available to us through prayer, uh, even in this season of Lent now, the, the grace is available to us through self-renunciation, renouncing my own will in favor of something greater, renouncing my appetites in favor of something greater. So... In all of this story, like God, God is carrying me the whole way. Before our time in, in, in the drama of history, the cross has already taken place. So the crucifixion has already taken place. So this, this unfathomable, ineffable source of grace is constantly showering us. So like as long as there's one host present on the earth, we're in the presence of God. So we're, we're in this, 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 this divine presence with grace available to us at all moments, at all times. Unless I say to God, not interested and separate myself from him through mortal sin. But we won't get lost in that point. Okay. God is carrying me the whole way. And then at the end of my life, I'm asked as such where I want to go. And if I've chosen a life that that where I walked with God and recognized his, his, his input in my life and, 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 and his love and his fatherly tenderness. And I've accepted God's mercy. I've accepted this grace from the cross that washes me clean. And then I'm capable, if you will, of heaven. I'm capable of God. But if, if I've lived a life where I want nothing, I've had not only wanted nothing to do with him, I've outright just said, look, just stay out of my way. Stay out of my life and stop interfering with all of your rules and guilt. All right? Just, just I'll do my thing and I'll be grand. At the end of my life then, it's interesting that the, 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 def the definition of hell 
right, is self-exclusion from communion with God. Self-exclusion. Self-exclusion. It doesn't say God is sick at the sight of you and casts you out. It says this state of self-exclusion from communion with God and the blessed is called hell. So at the end of our lives, it's not God who says, you up and you down. Our lives have chosen. We've chosen by the way we lived. And, but all, all the way, like none of, none of our story was absent from God's mind. None of us, none of us have ever like, fallen from his gaze. None of us have been beyond his grace unless, as I say, we, we chose to through mortal sin. So in, in the whole story, the whole story of our faith is God-centric, deocentric, not egocentric. It's not a, the whole story isn't about me. The whole story of, of your faith, which incidentally is our faith, it's the faith of the church, the whole story of, of your faith isn't about you. It's about God. If we make it about us, we'll change the rules according to our, our likes and dislikes. It's about God. It's about what God wants of us, expects of us, provides for us. It's about him carrying us. The summary of our faith is God-centric. It should be so obvious, but as I say, just kind of almost instinctively these days, when we start talking about our faith, we put us at the center. And then how things revolve around us, but that's, that's not the way it works. It's not the way it is. So in this season of, of Lent, that's why it's so important. How many of us have fallen off the, the wagon already? As regards our Lenten fasts, I think I slipped up once or twice already. So I'm, I'm, going to st I'm starting again anyway. I don't know about you. I'm starting again. Uh, yeah, there was a bit of a storm here last night. So I woke up and I thought, oh, I'll just lob on a bit of uh, YouTube. Have a look at Father Robert Barron there for a minute. And then I was halfway through a five-minute video. Said, did I give up YouTube for Lent? I did, yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Okay, so we're back on the wagon. We're all back on the wagon again, lads. Come on. Uh, so, uh, the reason we do this is renouncing my will in favor of something greater. Renounce your will in favor of something greater. And whatever sacrifices we make, whatever fasts, <clears throat> be they actually from, um, from, from food or as, as the Lord is indicating today, through all these other kind of interior, internal uh, attitudes or, or tendencies, sins, whatever it may be, whatever sacrifice we make, when, when, I, when the sands of time have passed and I find myself before the Lord, I will not regret a single sacrifice made out of love for him. I will not regret a single sacrifice made out of love for him. So Lord, renew us and strengthen us in this Lent that we might take our, our resolutions seriously. And Lord, that this may be a time of, of reconversion, turning back to you. And that in you, we may experience the freedom of the children of God. Amen.